Hi everybody, I'm here at the official opening day of Bird Paradise and the place is huge so I'm going to give you lots of practical tips for how to strategize and get the most out of your visit. This is Crimson Wetlands where you find the most colorful birds in the collection. Your first question might be, is the ticket price worth it? Because it really does add up with your family. From now till 26th of May 2023, there's a $10 discount on tickets. I do think that this is an absolutely top-notch attraction. There's a huge team of passionate people who create it and operate this place. They care about the animals, they care about the guest experience, so it's totally worth the ticket price. However, I think getting the annual Friends of Wildlife Pass is a really good deal because wouldn't you want to be friends with this helmeted curacao? Look at that cask on his head. Ooh. It's really good value, you just need to visit Bird Paradise five times in a year to cover the price of your entry ticket. But you can visit all the other parks as well. So when is the best time to come to Bird Paradise? As early in the morning as you can because now it's midday, it does get very very hot. And the birds are also more active in the morning. If your kids are early risers, you can bring a picnic to Mandai Wildlife West which is a free public park or you can have breakfast at Starbucks which overlooks the playground. Then the fun can begin even before Bird Paradise opens at 9am. Can you visit Bird Paradise when it's raining? I wouldn't recommend it because all the aviaries are not sheltered. How much time should you set aside to see everything? Well, you could spend the entire day here, but I actually don't recommend you do that, especially if you have small children. It's probably best to take the park in in like three hour chunks, and hence, you know, the value of the membership as well. The membership also gives you 20% of all merch and F&B. And if I seem like I'm really flogging this membership, it's because it's worked so well for me and my kids. That's why I recommend it. Top tip, do not touch the railings because they can give you a zap. They're not electrified but there's a lot of static electricity. What activities are available? Feeding times are the best times to get close to birds. You have to book them in advance on the website and they're very popular, so do book early. You can feed pelicans, lorries and starlings. Yummy! You can also feed cassowaries but I didn't get to see that. Keeper talks are also a good time to see the birds and learn about them. No need to book, just turn up. And many of the keepers are so friendly, you can just strike up an informal conversation with them. You'll definitely want to catch some shows too, so I've got the whole schedule of everything combined here. All of the timings for these exciting activities can be found in the description below. It's impossible yeah, so, to do everything in one day, but you can use this schedule as a guide, see what you're interested in, and just go with the flow. What are some other highlights? For really active kids, the moment they see the egg splash and the treetops play, they'll want to do it, so you might as well get it out of their system. And treetops play is relatively shaded throughout the day. It's now 12 noon, and this is what it looks like. Egg Splash is absolutely brilliant and if you forgot your swimwear or sunblock or soap and shampoo, it's all there in the gift shop. The showering facilities are pretty good. If you're a bird nerd, you'll definitely want to check out Wing Sanctuary because this is where the park houses the rarest birds in its collection. Many of these are even critically endangered. Some, like the Vietnam pheasant, have not been seen in the wild for decades, but they are working on plans to reintroduce it uh, into its native habitat. Behind me here is the rhinoceros hornbill. This is the most time-consuming section to write because there are just so many different species here and so many wonderful things to learn about all of them. But it was very rewarding and meaningful because this is where I really found out about Mandai's conservation efforts in the region. Now this doesn't really look like the entrance to the biggest aviary in bird paradise, but it is. Heart of Africa is just through that door.
I'm here in Mysterious Papua and this is another one of the fascinating birds that I learned about uh, while working on this project. This bird is actually a drummer. It uses a stick to beat out a rhythm. Usually using its left foot because most parrots are left footed. And that's how it attracts a mate. Almost all the aviaries have some species of parrots in them because they're the easiest birds to spot. But many other birds are masters of camouflage in the wild their survival depends on it. They had songs of the forest as well as elsewhere in the park and are more likely to actually hear the birds than to see them. Do bring your binoculars. It's quite good to take your time, move slowly. Then you'll see things that you might otherwise miss. And also take time to read the information panels. I think you really find that it will enrich your experience. Although of course I'm, I could be biased. Next question, where can I hide when it is just too hot? Take some respite from the heat at Penguin Cove. This nook is particularly good if you're there the whole day and you have kids who need to nap. Look out for the air-conditioned transition zones, which actually help prevent bird escapes. This one's gonna make a run for it. Ooh. So many of the transition zones are highly interactive. This is a good photo point. They're educational too. They're meant to show people how amazing birds are and what are some of the unique features of this group of animals. They're a handy place to take a break in between aviaries. In this transition, you can play different bird calls. <laughs> In this transition, you can learn about the incredible journeys birds undertake, and many of them stop over along their migration right here in Singapore. There's also a little aircon room next to Egg Splash. Very important, what food and beverage options are available? Here's the Food Central, which is your standard food court. You have to order and pay for your food here, then you collect it from the individual stalls. Egg Splash Cafe offers little snack bites, it has kid-friendly seating and also seating right next to the play area. Crimson is the more upmarket restaurant overlooking Crimson Wetlands. I cannot tell you how happy it makes me to see actual flocks of macaws just flying around the huge aviary. There's also the Penguin Cove Cafe. Bird Bakery and the Penguin Cove restaurant are not open yet, but can you imagine when it is? Wow, what a view. If none of those options appeal to you, you could come out to eat at Mandai Wildlife West, but the 20% F&B discount for members doesn't apply out here. If you and your devices need to be charged, you can go to Starbucks where you can plug in if you have your adapter with you. They also offer Friends of Wildlife members a 10% discount. Last question, should I go to Bird Paradise now during the soft opening period or should I wait till next month when everything should be in? Well, I don't think there's any right or wrong there. Um, last week when I went, I didn't see any kookaburras, but they're there now and uh, new birds are being brought in all the time. Do also check out the emus at Australian Outback. They're really cool, the second largest bird in the world. Well, I hope this was helpful to you. If you like what you saw, please do subscribe. Check out my other videos about writing for Bird Paradise and traveling and parenting. Until next time, bye! Happy birthday.